It is a historic moment in this kitchen right now. I just taught Chef John Paul something. This man knows almost everything, <laughs> except for the fact that I told you that I just learned that when you hear bagpipes in Scotland, you have to hold. You, they, it, it's customary to hold a, a, a thing, a glass uh, of have a glass of scotch. scotch. I, I also understand that in Scotland, it's also traditional that when you hear a phone ring. That you should have a glass of scotch, <laughs> and yeah. So or when you wake up, it's one of many things in Scotland where you should be caught holding a glass That's of scotch. scotch. <laughs> exactly. Well, okay, so we're back in the kitchen with Chef John Paul, and this time um, he is sharing his new favorite grilled, uh, no, sautéed no, monkfish. Monkfish. Recipe. And monkfish is one of the ugliest fish you've ever seen. Sometimes it's called an anglerfish, and its its body is 50% head, so you rarely okay. see it as a whole fish, and it's got this. The, it's called an anglerfish because it's got this cool cord that hangs mm -hmm. out the top of its head, and it looks like a fishing lure. And it oh, gets, is it? I've, okay, yeah. no, I'm not even going to go there because I'm going to sound silly. But yes, no, I know but, what you're but, about. but it hangs out on the ocean floor, and it just kind of waits and dangles this thing out there. And when prey goes by and nips at it, it opens its mouth, and its head is so huge it creates a suction and pulls the fish into it. And it's got nasty rows of teeth, and it's because it eats so much delicious fish. Uh huh. Its meat is fantastic. Oh, gotcha. So, now, if it's like all head, is the is the meat kind of prized because there's not much body to get? This the is actually this used to be very cheap um, back in the 70s and 80s. They couldn't figure out what to do with this fish, but it has kind of the texture of lobster. So, if you're not a fish person, this is a great way to start. But right now, it's getting a little more expensive. Okay. But as you see, um, all I did was I took a medallion here and just took this guy and just season it with salt and pepper and a little bit of flour and it's cooking up almost like a scallop wood. Uh -huh. All right, so it doesn't look like a flaky fish. So it's a really, it's a fun fish to play with. Um, especially unless for Unless you're the little fish that like swim yeah, in front of yeah, it. Of course, right. yeah, unless you're that poor little guy there. All right, so this guy is just kind of cooking away. Now, I put it in just before we went on break, so it's been cooking about two, three minutes. Okay. Okay, real, real simple, real easy process. Over here, I have some European cucumbers and what I did was I cut them I cut the core out, cut them into quarters, and then I turn this into what's called a tournée or a turn. So if you've never had cooked cucumber before, it's amazing. It's no, one of I'm my not. favorite vegetables for fish. Absolutely one of my favorites. What's with, with the European, or would you say European cucumber? Mm hmm. How is uh, it different some, than like the traditional cucumbers that we get? At, I can leave the skin on. Sometimes oh, it's they're not called, bitter? and they're really not European. We were talking about this before the show. Uh, I'm just going to start building this dish. I'm going to add some shallots. Okay. And cook that off a little bit. European cucumbers were originally there, called a little bit of both. Okay. All right. So I want, but I use whole butter, not clarified butter. And when I can smell it, so you can kind of smell it. Yep. Now we're gonna hit it with some wine. Ah. Uh, I like how you say you're gonna hit it with some wine. Yeah, it's kind of macho. It is very macho. Yeah. When you're working with a Chablis, I like to be a little <laughs> more macho. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, but but the cucumbers, these are the ones you see in the supermarket that are wrapped in plastic. And the reason they wrap them in plastic is because the skins are so delicate, um, so we can leave them out and eat them. If you had a regular cucumber and tried to do this, you'd be gnawing through that. Okay, let me show everybody. This is what we're looking at right here. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful cucumber. I'm going to add some capers, those little jewels, those little pops. Now, a lot of people are afraid of capers. I used um, to be. Not anymore. Right. We like them now. I'm a big girl it, now with it those. Really, it really kind of breaks up the flavor. And I love it because you're never bored when you have a caper. I'm going to add a little bit of lemon. Mm, so I have lemon, caper, white wine, tomato as my primary flavors. And then all I have to do, add a now, pinch of salt. Now, do you have the um, tomato dice that small because you want kind of it to balance with the, the size of the caper? Or does it, is it just because? You're so perceptive you're stealing my thunder. Absolutely correct. All right. So okay. typically what I want to do is I want to dice everything. So I can't dice a caper. Right. All right, so everything would be sized to the caper. So anything I would put in here would be about caper size. Okay. So it does a couple things. I'm going to have more flavor. If I have big, chunky pieces of tomato, that's going to be an issue because um, uh, if, if I have a big chunk of tomato and a chunk of fish, the tomato is going to dominate everything. Okay. All right, but if everything's the same size, I'm going to get a lot of kind of that communal flavor going on in there. And then all I'm going to do is just swirl that butter until it melts. Now, now for the people that don't have the big, tall hat, can they just stir it? They can stir it. Okay. All right, absolutely. Here. I have a little spoon. I have a Stephanie size spoon. <laughs> oh. It does look a lot chefier. All right. But it's actually, you'll find it's easier because now I don't have to figure out where I'm going to put the spoon. Well, let's put that bad mamma jamma right in there with those pretty little things and um, show how it all comes together. Okay. A little bit of a, what is that, chopper? A little parsley? bit of a flourish at the end, yeah. Okay. So we're going to spoon this over the top. 
Bama Lama Bama Lou. I dig that child about to drive me wild with Bama Lama Bama Lou. Little Richard, the king of rock and roll. All right, and then just fan some of these guys around there. And as I said, experiment. Play with stuff in your fridge. If you don't like capers, that's cool. Um, but try the cucumbers. If you May don't I have access to monkfish, rush you. Please rush me. <laughs> rush away. Um, you're gonna need to cut it. Oh it's, really? It's that muscle. Yeah, just grab that little piece right okay. there. Mmm. Mmm. All right. Yeah, it's dense. Let's put a little bit of this mm. oh. deliciousness on there. Oh. Fingers crossed. Mm. Clean. So good. All right, has a nice chew to it. There's a little bit. It's not flaky, but it's not scallopy. It's and like it's not right fishy. in between there, and it's absolutely yeah. not fishy. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite, favorite fish. Play with it. But if you can't find the monk fish, substitute another fish. Try mm. salmon. No, fish try the monk. Else. Never tried that before. Thank you for letting me <laughs> expand my palate. All right. The recipes are going to be available on SonoranLiving.com. We'll have the uh, shrimp, and we'll also have the, the sautéed monk, and you just let us know how they turned out in your home.